subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello students. Good morning to all of you. So welcome to another new topic from sexual reproduction in flowering plants. That is post fertilization structures and events. post fertilization structures and events after fertilization what are the changes are takes place in a flower see here post fertilization post fertilization changes in floral parts post fertilization changes in floral parts see here after fertilization so generally sepals petals stamens and the style wither away and are shut down in some of the plants see first change sepals the sepals fall down sepals fall down persist in a few cases what is meant by here persist persist means uh, here permanent you take in some plants the sepals is a uh, persistent 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 sepals. What is best example here? The persistent sepals. Example. Tomato. Solanum. And uh, petunia. After fertilization, in these plants, these are the main three plants. These are three plants are belongs to the Solanaceae family. In majority of the Solanaceae family plant members, so the sepals do not fall down. That is uh, still the persistent sepals are attached to the fruit. See here, this is a tomato fruit. This is a persistent persistent sepals. That's why here persistent sepals, these are permanent sepals, these are still attached to the here fruit. Do not fall down. Next one. Accrescent sepals. Here what is meant by here accrescent sepals? Accrescent sepals, best example, physalis. In physalis, see here the permanent sepal is completely enclosed the fruit. This is fruit. The entire fruit is enclosed by the here the persistent sepal. Complete here see the fruit complete enclosed by the persist sepal. 
So such type of the cephals is known as the acrescent cephals. The best example for the acrescent cephals is a physalis. So this is two conditions is a persistent in a few members that is persistent cephals best example tomato, solanum and petiole. And acrescent cephals the best example physalis. So the cephals is generally here fall down after fertilization. Next one. Petals. Even petals also fall down. Stamens. Stamens also fall down. Next one. Stigma and uh, style. These parts also fall down. Next one. Ovary. The ovary is developed into the fruit after fertilization next one ovary wall the ovary wall is developed into the fruit wall that is the pericarp pericarp means the fruit wall is a pericarp next one Outer integuments. The outer integuments are developed into the testa. This is outer seed coat. Next. Inner integuments. Inner integuments. Tegment. It is uh, the inner seed coat. Next one. Macrophile. It is developed into the macrophile of seed. Next. New cellus. The nucellus is developed into the perisperm. It is very important if present. If present the nucellus in structure of the vowel, that is uh, developed into the perisperm. So generally here the nucellus is uh, degenerated after fertilization. But in some of the plants, the Nucellus is if present that is developed into the perisperm. Next one. Synergid cells. The synergid cells is generally degenerated after fertilization. Degenerate. Antipodals. Even antipodal cells also degenerated. Antipodals. Next. Central cell. The central cell is developed into the primary endosperm cell. That is endosperm. Next, egg cell, egg cell is developed into the zygote and further the zygote is developed into the embryo. Next, funiculus of vowel is developed into the 
द स्टाल्क ऑफ सीड सो दिज आर मेन चेंजेस द फर्स्ट फर्टिलाइजेशन चेंजेस इन फ्लोरल पार्ट फर्स्ट हियर सेफल्स पेटल्स स्टेम एंड स्टिग्मा एंड स्टाइल ऑल आर फॉल्ड ऑन the ovary is developed into the fruit after fertilization and ovary wall is developed into the fruit wall that is known as the pericarp outer integument of the ovule is developed into the testa testa means it is outer seed coat the inner integuments is developed into the tegmen it is a inner seed coat microphyll of the ovule is developed into the microphyll of the seed next one nucellus if present nucellus in the structure of the ovule that is developed into the perisperm so generally the nucellus is after first fertilization that is degenerated if present that is developed into the perisperm next synergid cells and antipodal cells both are degenerated after fertilization the central cell is developed into the primary endosperm cell and that is mature the endosperm the egg cell is developed into the zygote and further the zygote is developed into the embryo the funiculus of the ovul is developed into the the stalk of the seed so these are all the first fertilization changes in the floral parts next the development of the endosperm the development of the endosperm what is meant by here endosperm the endosperm is a, the triple fusion product the fusion of the male gamete and the secondary nucleus as a result the endosperm primary endosperm is developed that's why here the endosperm is a, the triple fusion product triple fusion product next one the endosperm is a store the food material that's why it is one of the nutrient tissue so that's why this is developed from the central cell central cell is developed into the primary endosperm cell pec primary endosperm cell it is a store the food material that's why it is a nutrient tissue the food material is supplied to the, the developing embryo that's why here the food material is supplied to the, the developing embryo and further the zygote is utilization of the food material and then that is developed into the embryo next one the development of the here the endosperm the endosperm is mainly of three types on the basis of the development of the endosperm what is name of the three types of the endosperm first one the nuclear endosperm it is also known as the free nuclear endosperm second one cellular endosperm and the third one helobial endosperm these are three types of the endosperm on the basis of the development of the endosperm see here first one the nuclear endosperm or free nuclear endosperm it is a embryo sac this is zygote after fertilization the egg cell is developed into the zygote next one this is a central cell after fertilization the central cell is developed into the which one the primary endosperm cell the primary endosperm cell is containing the pen primary endosperm nucleus 
this is uh, the primary endosperm nucleus this is known as the the primary endosperm cell these are b generated antipodals see here the development of the endosperm first one here this the central cell the central cell is contained the primary endosperm nucleus the primary endosperm nucleus is undergo the free nuclear cell division it is not immediately followed by the cytokinesis generally the zygote is developed towards the macrophylar end this is completely macrophylar end it is developing embryo the embryo is developed from the zygote see here this one the primary endosperm nucleus undergo free nuclear division it is not immediately followed by the cytokinesis that's why here the number of nucleus is formed this one and next same this is uh, the developing embryo in central position big vacuoles is developed that's why here the free nucleus is pushing towards the peripheral side this one so these are completely the free nucleus and later this is the embryo these are all the free nucleus is uh, followed by the cytokinesis at the final stage this is the the mature endosperm the mature endosperm see so this is the development of the here the nuclear endosperm why it is called nuclear endosperm first beginning the primary endosperm nucleus is undergoes the the free nuclear divisions when the free nuclear cell division is takes place here that's why that is named by the the nuclear endosperm and la last stage at the final stage what happened this free nucleus is uh, followed by the cytokinesis that is formation of cell wall and each nucleus is uh, surrounded by the cell wall that's why this is uh, the cellular endosperm at the final stage but in the beginning stage it is followed by the free nuclear cell division that's why this is known as the the free nuclear endosperm or nuclear endosperm what is the example for here the nuclear endosperm or free nuclear endosperm the best example capsilla and polypetale what is here polypetale the polypetale means it is uh, the subclass of the dicotyledons these are the best example for here the nuclear endosperm or free nuclear endosperm next one what is a cellular endosperm the cellular endosperm same this is a first one this is a second one the cellular endosperm this is the main zygote primary endosperm cell the degenerating antipodals same developing embryo
developing embryo here first uh, the primary endosperm cell undergo unequal cell division that is form the two unequal cells see the cell division is Im immediately followed by the cytokinesis the cell wall is formed between the two nu nuclei it is big cell the big cell towards the macrophylar end that is macrophylar end it is a chala cell end the towards the chala cell end the cell is very small and towards the macrophylar end the cell is very big size a later same the developing embryo each cell division is uh, immediately followed by the cytokinesis that's why this is known as the the cellular type of uh, endosperm this one and finally it is developed into the endosperm this is a uh, embryo see here each nucleus is uh, surrounded by the hair cell wall that is immediately the cell division is followed by the cytokinesis that's why this is known as the the cellular type of endosperm so what is example for here the cellular type of endosperm the best example gametophyte what is the gametophyte it is also the subclass of the dicots subclass of dicots subclass of dicots total three is there polypetalae gametophyte and monoclamide these are three subclass of the dicots this one what is difference between the free nuclear type of the endosperm and the cellular type of the endosperm see here from beginning here the primary endosperms nucleus undergoes the free nuclear cell division does not followed by the immediately cytokinesis but here beginning onwards the cell, cell division is followed by the cytokinesis that is the karyokinesis nuclear cell division is followed by the here karyokinesis that's why here the cells formation is takes place from beginning onwards that is known as the the cellular type of the endosperm next one last type helobial endosperm it is intermediate type this type of endosperm having both characters of the free nuclear endosperm and as well as the cellular type of endosperm see same structures zygote primary endosperm cell and uh, here the degenerating antipodes in this one first it is developing embryo this primary endosperm nucleus is divided unequally it is immediately followed by the cytokinesis this is towards the same manner towards the macrophylar end big cell towards the chala cell end small cell here immediately is followed by the here cytokinesis the nuclear division is immediately followed by the here cytokinesis and later it is followed by the free nuclear cell division 
developing embryo. See here. One nucleus is divided into many nucleus, but it is not followed by the cytokinesis. Here also, one nucleus, single nucleus is undergo the, the free nuclear cell division and then form the free nucleus. Two cells. Each cell is containing the multinucleated condition. A later, it is followed by the cytokinesis. It is the embryo. is our cellular type of endosperm. That is. See here the first two endosperm type characters are there. First one here the cellular type character is there. Here the free nuclear characters is there. That's why this is known as the, the intermediate type of the endosperm. What is best example for this intermediate type of the endosperm? The order is uh, elobials. It is order of the monocot. It is order of the monocot that is known as the helobials. So this is a uh, the total three different types of the here endosperm on the basis of the development of the endosperm that is a free nuclear endosperm next cellular type of endosperm and helobial type of endosperm next one you take tender coconut this fruit is contain two types of the endosperm here the tender coconut the drinking portion it is coconut water the coconut water is the best example for the nuclear endosperm what is another name of nuclear endosperm the free nuclear endosperm It is uh, the free nuclear endosperm. Next one, the edible portion of the here, the tender coconut, that is white uh, kernel. This uh, white kernel is edible portion in coconut. It is the cellular type of endosperm. cellular type of endosperm. That's why here the coconut is the best example for the, the two types of endosperm is a clear visible or a find out in the structure of tender coconut. The coconut water is the best example for the here the free nuclear endosperm and the edible portion the white kernel is known as the, the best example for the cellular type of endosperm. So now we are discussing about the special points about the here, the structure of the endosperm. What are the, the special points for here, the endosperm? First one, the endosperm is absent in some of the plants. The endosperm is completely absent in some of the angiosperms. The best example for the endosperm is completely absent in angiosperms. Orchidaceae family. It is a monocotyledon family. Next one. Podostemaceae. Next one, 
trapezi. In these three families, completely here, the endosperm is absent. Already you know, the, what is the ploidy of the endosperm? Generally here, the ploidy of the endosperm is a triploid, but in some cases, the endosperm is a diploid. The endosperm is a diploid. Example, Enothera. In Enothera Lamarckiana, evening primrose plant, in this plant, here, the secondary nuclei, that is, the central cell is contained in the only single nucleus. That's why here, the endosperm is, ploidy number is only 2N, diploid. Next one, the endosperm, tetraploidy, 4N. What is the example for here? The endosperm is a tetraploidy. Best example. Plumbazilla fritillaria. Here, the central cell is contained total three nucleus. After fertilization, the male gamete is fusion with the three cells, three nucleus of the central cell that is develop the 4N tetraploidy endosperm. Next one, the endosperm 5N pentaploidy, the best example plumbago. Plumbazil and fritillary is a 4N, here the plumbago is a 5N. Next one, the endosperm ploidy 9N, the best example, peperomia, see here. The general the endosperm is a triploid, but in, in these cases, see here in Enothera, diploid, and flambazella, and fritillaria, 4N, and flambago, 5N, and peperomia, that is 9N. So this is the here the different ploidy of the endosperm are clear observed in different types of the flowering plants. Next one, mosaic endosperm. What is mosaic endosperm? You see in some cases, mice and a tomato. In maize and a tomato here clear observe the mosaic type of endosperm. What is the mosaic form endosperm? The mosaic endosperm means in which the patches of colors are present in endosperm that is known as the mosaic endosperm. Mosaic means the scattered colors. The scattered colors are present in the endosperm that is known as the mosaic endosperm. The best example for here the mosaic endosperm mice and tomato. Next one. Ruminate endosperm. The ruminate endosperm means here the surface of endosperm is folding is takes place. When the surface of endosperm is completely folding, such a type of the endosperm is known as the, the ruminate endosperm. So in the best example for the here, the ruminate endosperm Anonesi family, Anona. Okay, the Anonesi family is containing the ruminate endosperm. Next one, in some plants, starchy endosperm. The best example here, the starchy endosperm rice, wheat, and mice. When mice is also the starchy endosperm, here 
the starch and sperm is best example rice wheat and maize these are the example for a starchy endosperm these are the the special points of the here the endosperm okay next one embryogeny what is embryogeny the development of embryo from the zygote the development of embryo from the zygote is known as the embryogeny now the embryogeny in dicots the embryogeny in dicots it is a common type crucifer or one grad type in this type see first one the zygote or oospore it is undergoes unequal mitotic cell division as a result of unequal mitotic cell division two cells are formed one cell towards the macrophylar and it is large cell and another cell towards the chala cell and it is very small cell towards the macrophylar and that cell is known as the basal cell or suspensor cell towards the chala cell end that cell is known as the the terminal cell or apical cell or embryonal cell and further in a third step see here the basal cell and as well as the the terminal cell is a simultaneously cell division is takes place first here the basal cell or suspensor cell that is repeated cell division is takes place that is vertical the cell division is takes place so when the transverse cell division is takes place in a, the suspensor cell the totally 6 to 10 the suspensor cells is formed in that suspensors the towards the here the macrophylar and that last cell is known as the astorium it is receiving the food material from the endosperm and then the food material is uh, supplied to the the development of the embryo next one the last cell of the suspensor towards the here the terminal cell that is known as the hypophysis this hypophysis is gives rise to the the root cap and as well as the radical okay so finally here the basal cell or suspensor cell the number of uh, the main uh, transverse division is takes place and that is maximum gives rise to the 6 to 10 cells in this 6 uh, to 10 cells towards the macrophylar and the last cell of the suspensor is known as the astorium you know what about main function of the here astorium the receiving food material here the astorium is pushing the pro embryo into the endosperm and getting the food material from the endosperm next one here the suspensor cell the last cell of the here towards the the terminal cell is known as the hypophysis which is gives rise to the the root cap and radical next one see here the division of the here the terminal cell the division of the terminal cell is first is a uh, the longitudinal division this is a uh, the longitudinal division and then the vertical division is takes place finally here one longitudinal division and the two vertical divisions is takes place when the two vertical divisions and one longitudinal division is takes place in the here the terminal cell that is form the two types of these cells the upper tier is a cell is known as the here hypobasal and the lower tier is known as the epibasal the hypobasal is towards the which one hypophysis so this hypobasal cells is gives rise to the hypocotyl and the part of the radical what about epibasal cell the epibasal cells is gives rise to the the flimule epicotyl and two cotyledons okay so as a result of here the two vertical divisions and one longitudinal divisions is gives rise to the the total eight cell stage this is a octant stage so in this one upper tier is known as the hypobasal and lower one is the epibasal the hypobasal cell is near to the here hypophysis 
this are gives rise to the hypocotyl and the part of the radical the epibasal cell gives rise to the flemule epicotyl and the two cotyledons next one as a result of periclineal division in this portion that is gives rise to the three zones in the embryo what is the three zones in the embryo first one the dermatogen outermost layer it is also known as the protoderm this dermatogen is gives rise to the epidermis it is a outermost layer of the the structure of the embryo it is a, the protective layer of the embryo second one ground meristem the ground meristem is a gives rise to the cortex and the pith central portion and next one the prokamium the prokamium is gives rise to the vascular strands the conductive tissue it is supplying of the food material and as well as the water and minerals this is uh, the total three zones in the structure of the embryo that is the uh, dermatogen ground meristem and prokamium the prokamium is gives rise to the vascular tissue okay this is known as the the globular stage of the embryo and finally it is developed into the heart shape of the embryo these are the different stages of the here the embryogeny in dicots first this is known as the pro embryo next one globular stage of the embryo next one heart shape of the embryo and finally the mature type of the embryo now discuss about the here the mature structure of the embryo So next one, the structure of the dicot embryo. The structure of the dicot embryo is consist of the two portions. First one is the the embryonal axis, and the second one is the cotyledons. The embryonal axis. This is what is the here embryonal axis. The central portion between here the flimule and the radical is known as the the embryonal axis. The embryonal axis is also known as the tessellum. so next one in the structure of the dicot embryo see here this is complete the structure of the dicot embryo the embryonal axis here this is uh, the total two cotyledons are there the above the two cotyledon portion is known as the flimio this is two cotyledons the two cotyledons above portion is known as the flimio and next one the below cotyledons portion is known as the hypocotyl it is a epicotyl the epicotyl is terminated with the flimule and the hypocotyl is terminated with the radical and finally here the radical is enclosed by the root cap it is also known as the calyptra so this is a, the structure of the dicot embryo so next one the embryogeny in dicot is a common type is a crucifer type already you are discussing next it is a, mostly reported in capsula Einstein scientist was discovered the embryogeny in dicots next one the embryogeny in dicots already know the definition of here embryogeny the development of the embryo from the zygote the embryogeny in monocots it is the most common type lilium type the lilium type is found in uh, monocotyledons first see here the zygote it undergoes the the unequal mitotic cell division and form the two cells that is known as the basal cell and the terminal cell the towards the macrophylar end the bigger cell is known as the basal cell and towards the chela cell end the small cell is known as the the terminal cell or embryonal cell here one more difference is there the difference between the embryogeny in dicots and embryogeny monocots see here the basal cell does not divided here it is very very important point what about in a uh, embryogeny in dicots the basal cell is uh, the repeatedly transfers division is uh, takes place and gives rise to the 6 to 10 cells that cells is known as the suspensor cells but here the basal cell does not divided only here the terminal cell or embryonal cell is only divided when the terminal cell is uh, divided here transversely 
that is gives rise to the two cells that is uh, one is the middle cell the towards the basal cell and uh, second one is the cotyledon cell the middle cell is also known as the embryonal axis cell it is uh, the embryonal axis cell so the basal cell is further that is uh, gives rise to the only single cell of the suspensor it act as the astorium it is receiving the food material from the endosperm next one see here this is these are all structures are developed from the here the repeated division of the only the cotyledon cell this is a cotyledon cell and middle cell so this middle cell gives rise to the radical and hypocotyl this one and a few cells of the suspensor the few cells are also attached to the suspensor as a result of division repeated division of the middle cell so finally here the middle cell is mainly gives rise to the the radical and hypocotyl and what about the cotyledon cell the cotyledon cell is gives rise to the the femur and cotyledon the femur and cotyledon these portions are developed from the here the cotyledon cell so this is uh, the structure of the here the mature structure of the the monocot suspensor the receiving food material from the endosperm flemmule it is the future shoot system radical it is the future root system and cotyledon here see in monocotyledon only single cotyledon is uh, developed from the here the cotyledon cell it is the entirely the embryogeny in monocots it is common in a lean type of endosperm is commonly found in the the structures of the monocotyledons okay so this is the embryogeny in monocots lilium type so next one the structure of the monocot embryo this is particularly the structure of the grass embryo so the grass embryo the generally the grass is belongs to the gramine family the structure of monocot embryo is uh, consist of the single cotyledon the single cotyledon is known as the scutellum and the uh, embryonal axis so this is a uh, embryonal axis what is embryonal axis the central portion between radical and flemmule so this is known as the embryonal axis here one more important point is there the single cotyledon is located so lateral side of the embryonal axis this is completely embryonal axis the lateral position is located the the single cotyledon that is known as the scutellum next one the below cotyledon portion is known as see here this is the complete embryonal axis the embryonal axis uh, the main uh, lower portion is known as the radical this is radical the radical is uh, enclosed by the root cap the radical and uh, root cap is both are enclosed by the undifferentiated sheath is known as the coleorhiza next one the upper portion of the embryonal axis that is attached to the scutellum is known as the epicotyl it is a uh, epicotyl it is a uh, hypocotyl this epicotyl is contain the shoot apex this shoot apex is enclosed by the the halo coleor structures is known as the coleo optile this coleo optile is completely undifferentiated sheath is enclosed by the flemmule or shoot apex so this is uh, the structure of the monocot embryo okay students okay bye